Welcome to the International Webinar Series 2020, organized by the postgraduate and research department of chemistry, Maharaja College of Nagala, in association with ICAP. This is the second day of the webinar series, and today's session is entitled as an unparalleled scientific experiment of media, the mark of the commission. So, once again, a warm welcome. To all the special dignitaries, faculty members, and students talking about the screen out there. Let us start the program with a prayer song. So, I would like to invite Agar Kuti of 3rd BSc Chemistry for the prayer song. <coughs> അച്ഛനുമമ്മയും എന്ത് പറഞ്ഞാലും അക്ഷരം തെറ്റാതനുസരിച്ചും ഉള്ളിൽ വെളിച്ചം പകരും ഗുരുവിനെ ഉന്മയിൽ സ്നേഹിച്ചു മാധരിച്ചും കൂടെ പഠിക്കുന്ന കുട്ടികളിൽ തൻ്റെ കൂടെ പിറപ്പുകളായി നിനച്ചും മാതൃഭൂവിന്നാൽ ജീവൻ ത്യജിച്ചോരെ മാതൃകയായിട്ടീകരിച്ചും ഈശ്വര കൈകൂപ്പി നിൽക്കും ഞാൻ നിൻമുന്നിൽ ഈറനണിഞ്ഞ മിഴികളോടെ കാരുണ്യമിന്നിൽ ചൊരിയണെ ഭൂവിന്നു കാരണമായുള്ള തമ്പുരാനി കാരണമായുള്ള തമ്പുരാനി Thank you, Agash. So let's start today's program. And I would like to welcome Sri K.P. Ashogan, Head of the Department of Chemistry, to take over the mic for the welcome address. Sir, Ashogan, sir, please unmute your mic. Hello, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. Good afternoon to all. As head of the Department of Chemistry, Maharaja's College, Ernagulam, and convener of the program, I am happy to welcome you all to this webinar. This is the second webinar of the five-day webinar series. Today's webinar is on an unparalleled scientific achievement of India, the Mars Orbiter Mission. The mission was meant to test India's ability to place a craft in Martian orbit and technologies required for future in interplanetary mission. India developed a cost-effective interplanetary mission. India became the first nation in the world in successfully reaching the Mars orbit in the first attempt. The United States and Soviet Union are the only two countries to land a spacecraft on Mars. The Department of Chemistry and Maharaja's College is proud of Dr. K. Nainan Sir being an alumni member and the man who gave great contribution in rocket propellants. Dr. K. Nainan Sir is formerly outstanding scientist of ESSC, Emeritus Professor or of IAST, Kiruvanduram, and a renowned scientist in polymer science. I think the resource person will discuss the hard work, plans, and technologies in this mission. I hope the webinar will be inspiring, informative, and a remarkable one. On behalf of the Department of Chemistry and all the delegates participating in the webinar, I extend a wholehearted welcome to Dr. K. N. Nainan, sir. Dr. 
Sucha Enar and Dr. Nina George are the coordinators of the webinar. They have done a great job for making this webinar a reality. I took this opportunity for congratulating the faculty members of our department who work behind this webinar. I extend a warm welcome to the teaching faculty of our college and all other institutions and the students of our college and the nearby institutions to this webinar. Once more, a hearty welcome to all. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable words. With pleasure, I would like to invite Dr. Nina George, Assistant Professor, Chemistry Department, Maharajas College, for introducing the resource person of the day, Dr. K. M. Naina. Let me introduce before you the resource person of the day. We have one of the eminent scientists with us today as our resource person, Dr. Kovur Naina Naina. He is our prestigious alumnus. We are proud of you, sir, the former MSc chemistry student of our college and university first rank order in the year 1968. He is former outstanding scientist at Vikram Sarabhai Space Center and Emeritus Professor, Indian Institute of Space, Science and Technology, Trivandrum. He is member of International Academy of Astronautics, Fellow of Kerala Academy of Sciences, and Honorary Fellow of Indian Society of Analytical Scientists and High Energy Materials Society of India. He completed his Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from Martama College, Sidwalla in the year 1966 with first rank. And as I already mentioned, he completed his MSc from our college in the year 1968 with first rank. He took his PhD from the University of Kerala in 1981. He has almost 40 years of service at VSSC, starting from 1968. He served as propellant engineer, the first head of analytical and spectroscopy division group, spectroscopy division, group director, propellant and special chemicals group, and deputy director VSC. He established a state of the art analytical facility at VSC and applied it for the advancement of India's space programs. He made significant contributions for the development of rocket propellants, polymers, and chemicals for various ISRO missions and also initi initiated RD programs to meet the future needs of ISRO in these areas. He was emeritus professor at IAST for five years, nurtured IAST in its formative years, and mentored students to realize BIOM, the first sounding rocket built by Indian students, launched in May 2012. He has authored 196 publications in international journals and 28 patents, including one European and US patent. He has guided 28 PhD research scholars and several MTech students. Recently, he has been ranked among world's top 2% scientists by Stanford University, USA. Some of the awards received by, received by him include Performance Excellence Award of ISRO in the year 2009, received from the President of India, Lifetime Achievement Awards of Indian Society of Analytical Scientists in the year 2019, and High Energy Materials Society of India in the year 2013. And he also received NICH ITAS Award of Indian Thermal Analysis Society in the year 1987. He has been the president of Kerala Academy of Sciences from 1998 to 2000 and Society for Polymer Science India from 2000 to 2001, High Energy Material Society of India, Trivandrum Chapter from 2004 to 2006. Let me some few say some few uh, say a few words about the Mars mission. The Mars orbital mission, MOM, referred to as Mongolian One, is a space probe launched by the Indian Space Research Organization on November 5, 2013, and has been in the Martian orbit since September 24, 2040. It is one of the proudest mission of India. India is the first Asian country to reach the Mars orbit and the first in the world to achieve it on its first attempt. So we have the apt person to speak on the Mars Orbiter mission 
on behalf of the Department of Chemistry Maharaja's College, Ernakulam, I welcome you, sir, for the presentation. Here, we enter into the most awaited session of the day, the second lecture of the webinar series by Dr. K. N. Nainan, Emirates Professor at Indian Institute of Space, Science and Technology, also the former scientist of VSSE, handling session entitled as An Unparalleled Scientific Achievement of India, the Mars Orbiter Mission. So once again, with all respect and gratitude, I would like to invite you, sir, to take over the session. Thank you. I am audible, I hope so. Yes, sir. Yes. Audible, audible. Audible. Okay. Professor A.P. Ashogan, yes, Head Department of Chemistry, Dr. Shuja, Dr. Nina George, and other faculty members, dear students, and other participants. I thank you for the nice words of introduction and also for inviting me to deliver a talk today. I compliment the, the postgraduate and research department of chemistry for organizing the international webinar series during the difficult time of uh, the lockdown period. Ever since you were a student, especially of chemistry, you have been continuously hearing about chemical reactions and various equations. So for a change, today, except in one slide, I'm not going to write any chemical equation or talk to you about chemistry. Instead, I will tell a story. All of you will be interested in hearing story, yes or no? I, I hope you are telling yes. Therefore, it is not a fiction like Sherlock Holmes or whatever it is there. But it's a real story, a, a science story. You would have heard several stories of ancient scientific achievement of the country, like the first surgery being done long ago, the iron pillar which does in rust, the metallurgy involved in it, or the mathematics of Aryabhata and so on and so forth. However, in the recent times, if you look at the recent history, unlike in the past, now at least half a dozen countries are ahead of us in science and technology. Therefore, it is rare for us to do something which these countries could not do. So my story is an achievement of India in the modern times, for which there is no parallel even among those advanced countries. It is therefore an extraordinary story achieved by ordinary scientists like all you guys. And, but extraordinary achievement by ordinary people will be of great interest to all of you. So Indian can definitely be, every Indian can there, therefore feel quite proud of what I'm going to tell today. So can I have my slides released? You can see my slides, no? Can you? Uh, yes, yes, sir. So, okay. So this is the story of Mars mission, which is the duration of the mission was 10 months and 21 days. Therefore, I rec I'm going to tell it to you in 40 minutes. So you have to attend to me very carefully. And at the end of this session, you will know that if we make an earnest attempt, we can do. So this is what I wanted to impress upon you in my lecture. Okay, so why I call it as unparalleled achievement? The success rate of Mars mission well over. There are four types of mission, fly by flying, 
சைட் பை சைட் த மார்ஸ் ஆர்பிட்டர் ஆர்பிட்டிங் கிரவுண்ட் லேண்டர் அண்ட் தென் ரோவர் ரோவர் மீன்ஸ் சம்திங் கமிங் அவுட் ஆஃப் த லேண்டர் 55 மிஷன்ஸ் வேர் தேர் ஸ்டில் சோ ஃபார் அண்ட் ஓன்லி லெஸ் தென் 50 परसेंट இஸ் தி சக்சஸ் பட் இஃப் யூ லுக் அட் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அட்டெம்ப்ட் ஆஃப் மார்ஸ் மிஷன் இட் பிகம்ஸ் மோர் அஸ்டாண்டிங் சி ஈவன் வெட்டரன்ஸ் லைக் யுஎஸ்எஸ்ஆர் தேர் மேட் அன் அட்டெம்ப்ட் வாஸ் எ ஃபெயிலியர் and they could achieve success only in the 10th attempt so was the case with usa japan or even very recently china also but look at this india has been success in the very first attempt had it been an open class i am sure there would have been a big clap by all of you okay so india is the only country in the world to succeed in the first attempt and the only asian country to reach the martian orbit this is the least expensive of the mars all the mars mission to date and there are say, several other features about which i will discuss in the, in the due course okay so the content of my lecture is answer to three questions why we went to the mars why we undertook this mission how our spacecraft called mangalyaan mangalyaan means mangal means as you know mars in sanskrit yaan means craft or vehicle how our mangalyaan reached the mars and what are the lessons learned from india's mars orbiter mission for a wider context for the students as well and of course in this you will get some of my personal touches also so why a mars and exploration the global interest in mars started from ancient times because this is the nearest planet and so we naked eye we can see looking at its red color the germans named mars which is the name of their war god of war and in india especially in kerala there are many poor girls suffered because of the jawad worship but then a better picture of mars emerged when with the advent of telescopes in to the science so people could see on a closer terms but then there were speculations that there are looking at the uh, images there were speculations that these type of things are canals and rivers and when i was a young boy almost every day there would have been a uh, some sort of a story in the newspaper saying that somebody has seen somebody moving in the mars or some, there is a civilization of mars etc but now today we have better understanding thanks to the space exploration of space crafts going to the mars so let us look at the special features of mars pertinent to the mars mission this is actually the image of earth actually made satellite image and this is of the mars yeah. therefore its diameter is half of that of the earth and its mass is 1/10 of the earth and therefore its gravity is 1/3 that of the earth so you can jump like this one year of mars is 687 earth days whereas one day is almost close as our our day it's very cold comparatively cold minus 63 against plus 14 for us its atmospheric pressure is 0.06 atmosphere and its atmosphere is this thin atmosphere 96% of its carbon dioxide which which is once again confirmed recently by the nasa's curiosity mission but the features unlike what we thought earlier today we know that mars is very dry there is no liquid water on its surface however look at this white patch there is 21 million kilometer cube of ice plus solid carbon dioxide on the polar region because carbon dioxide also will solidify at this temperature that's why it's ice plus carbon dioxide so the hypothesis is that 30 billion years ago mars had liquid water on the surface and microbial life but a better more conclusive evidence of the life would be methane in gas why because 90% of methane on earth is produced by microbes so methane can therefore indicate the presence of microbial life on mars now or even earlier in fact some of the missions of nasa and european space agency showed parts per billion ranges of methane in the mars atmosphere there is as you know because of this very low percentage some missions say absent some missions say ppb and so on there is no concord and research 
therefore it continues to be even now it continues as a continued interest for world over so the challenge however even though there is an interest there is a great challenge involved in going to mars this is because of the enormous distance and the differential speed between the two planets this is average distance of the orbit of earth and mars from sun so the average distance is almost 80 million kilometers and the speed is this so the differential speed is close to uh, about uh, 14000 kilometers per hour so mars mission is like a slingshot to a fast moving target which is millions and millions of kilometers away but still the global interest continues why to confirm whether methane or in other words life is present on the mars to establish location amount and nature of water on mars to explore rare minerals it, it is estimated that in 50 years from now most of our important metals will disappear at the rate of our present use and mars as a future habitat or intermediate station if our habitat a better habitat we find in very distant planets where we can't reach in a single shot this is evident from the uh, famous scientist who said a few uh, we have to find new homes elsewhere in the universe because disaster will destroy the earth already these disasters are there global warming nuclear war and a genetically uh, a, genetically engineered virus the uh, present virus is genetically engineered or not we don't know but he says that such things will compel you to go to distant planets in time to come that is why a very serious company private company spacex company usa has planned a, a settlement on mars in 2050 which is which appears like this okay but india does not have such a great such a great ambition in the maiden mission our maiden mission was to develop technologies required for interplanetary mission so that we can do it as time will deem it necessary in time to come so once having decided to go there we thought that we will have a few scientific objectives which are in fact secondary exploration of mars surface and martian atmosphere with indigenous scientific instruments that is a very conscious decision we have taken we will not have any foreign instruments on our mission so after having decided this we should now look at what are the elements of the mission we have to choose a suitable launch vehicle i have given green color to this because we have available ones we have to dis- design and realize a mars orbiter which is new we have to design a trajectory to go to mars which is new we have to develop deep space communication and navigation i have written it as partially new because already we have gone to moon at that time so we have of course a miniature Uh, deep space communication and navigation technology with us so the lesson learned from this is that i will try to give you the students the lessons learned in your daily life also our objectives are to be divided into clear cut milestones with appreciation of what is involved in each step okay shall i move on so the next slide is these are five india's launch vehicles at the time of this program when we started this the fifth one was not available so the first two are smaller ones what is called developmental vehicles having low capacity whereas the polar satellite launch vehicle is a operational launch vehicle which has a capability of taking 1.8 tons of the spacecraft to a polar orbit like this or 1.4 ton to a geostationary orbit like this above 36 km 6000 km above the earth it's a highly reliable and cost effective vehicle at that time we had 41 successive successful launches today the number is 49 you know that who 
those who follow our programs. And, and more, more than that, the most proud thing about the Lodge vehicle is that 237 at that time, today the number is 328. Foreign satellite from 28 countries have been launched using PSLV, which included 206 US satellites and the earning from the PSLV is 1,245 crores by its launch. GSLV Mark II was available at that time, but then it had success rate was low, less reliable, and therefore it was not taken up. Today, if we were to go, we will use this vehicle, PSLV Mark III, which has got a capability to put four ton in the geostationary transfer orbit. Okay, so we, so here, when you choose something, some path, the path has to be reliable and feasible routes, my dear, my dear students. Okay. Now, the design and realization of the orbit, Mangalyan, the spacecraft should have autonomous features because the, uh, the distance for communication, the time for communication, distance is so huge that the time for communication, two-way communication, signal going there and coming back, it takes 24 minutes. So if something happens there, there is no time to correct it because 12 minutes will be taken a signal to reach there. Another 12 minutes for us to assess whether it has happened or not. Therefore, we have made a totally autonomous, intelligent spacecraft, Mangalyan. So this is how it looks like. It has got a mass of 1.34 tons, out of which 600 and 850 kilogram is the propellants. That is around 62 third of the spacecraft is the propellant. Why the propellant is used? Because it has got two liquid engines. The main engine, I suppose you can see this, this is the main engine which thrusts it. And it has got eight small thrusters which are used for steering it. Attitude control, orbit control, etc. Because we cannot have a steering this way. It is steered with the, the thrusters. The propellant used in Mangalyan, propellant as you know, should have both oxidizer and fuel in itself because it has to work in deep space environment where there is no oxygen available. So the oxidizer is a mixture of oxide of nitric oxide 3% and 97% of dinitrogen tetroxide. It is, N2O4 is prepared by the catalytic oxidation of ammonia. The technology was developed with, uh, combinedly with a nitric acid in industry who produce, we procure the same from them. NO is prepared in our laboratory originally, which is scaled up also by the reaction of sodium nitrite with nitric acid. I have included a few equations for the satisfaction of the chemistry faculty and the teachers. Okay. Uh, the fuel is monomethyl hydrazine, MMH, hydrazine with one methyl group, hydrogen substituted with the methyl group. It is synthesized by the reaction of monomethyl amine with uh, excess of with chloramine in presence of excess of sodium hydroxide to give monomethyl hydrazine. Hydrazine is uh, sorry, uh, the chloramine itself is prepared by the reaction of sodium hypochlorite with ammonia. So when we were doing it in the laboratory, we were handing over the thing in a carboy like a manana carboy. This was our uh, chief of our propellant activity at that time, handing over to Professor Yuar Rao, who was the chief of the satellite project. But today we are handing over in these big tankers in the Rolori because we have established our own plant. Mon uh, Eno and Mon 3 are produced in this plant, which we have established at Mahindragiri, which is near Nagargovil. Whereas in the case of MMH, it is produced in, the, in a plant in Andhra Sugars at Andhra Pradesh because the they, are, uh, they have the capability for manufacturing hydrazine. So our technology was transferred to them and they make it. So what, my dear students, what I want to tell is it is something to synthesize a material in the laboratory and something else to scale it up and produce. It takes several years. So a concept utility, the real science is in that. It involves a lot of other people, mechanical engineers, designers, then structural engineers, and so on and so forth. So in time to come, 
you will have to learn those of who who are opting for science not for teaching of course pure chemistry alone is enough you have to learn to live with all these people live their language live their understand their language and appreciate them okay so there are five measuring instruments on board the mangalyaan and normally these five measuring instruments would have weighed a normal course about 2.5 tons but what we have indigenously developed all of them put together weighs only 14 kilograms okay one of them is a methane sensor which is a short wave infrared radiometer to measure methane in ppb ranges then lyman alpha photometer to measure h2d2 ratio to measure uh, to find out the loss of water from mars how it was lost and a quadruple mass spectrometer the, the weight of the mass spectrometer is 1.8 uh, kilogram for measuring constituents in the upper atmosphere then a thermal infrared imaging spectrometer to measure the surface composition and mineralogy of the mars and then we have of course the mars camera color camera color camera to uh, to monitor the mars surface there were a lot of discussion because we had a national level committee some people were telling that what what use of sending these uh, equipments because it will not give results comparable to nasa or esa who who have Uh, send a heavier higher resolution equipments so people may laugh at you but then it was a national level committee at that time people like dr kalam was were available they gave us go ahead you do it because it will give you experience of making instruments for interplanetary missions in future so the lesson we have learned is make use of every opportunity which is available to you in life okay so next is so we have realized so what are what are we, we have uh, chosen the launch vehicle we have made uh, the mangalyaan and we have made a uh, five instruments and fitted on to it so you imagine you are going through this particular path in your in in the journey of today's class next is okay we have to take it to the mars it involves three steps the major steps involved most of the propulsion power is to leave the sphere of influence of earth and getting injected to the mars atmosphere uh, injected towards mars so on november 5 2013 mangalyaan was launched by pslv into a elliptical orbit with uh, 250 uh, by 23500 kilometers elliptical orbit using 260000 kg of the launch vehicle propellant then their quantity of the launch vehicle propellant and it has taken and then six orbit racing maneuvers i think i have a okay i have an animation for that six orbit racing maneuvers were done using only about 447 kg of the spacecraft propellant so these are the six maneuvers and after the sixth one we have got the correct velocity to get it injected towards the mars from the earth's gravity so next is cruising to mars i have used that term cruising because we cannot afford to use tons and tons of propellant to reach there instead we should have a mechanism of reaching mars using the minimum amount of propellant otherwise the vehicle will not even act. come out of the earth gravity so we don't have any experience so what do we do there are two uh, two situations the minimum distance condition where the earth and mars are like this so you may ask why not directly shoot from here to here but this will require enormous amount of propellant needed to travel the short distance because we have to travel against the gravity or in this condition but the maximum distance is something like 400 million kilometers straight away straight distance so the the crux of the secret of going to mars from earth is to go around the sun make use of the gravity of the earth uh, sorry the gravity of the uh, of the sun to go to mars because you know no propellant is needed to travel around the sun the long distance route if you are able to 
put your spacecraft in a stable orbit around the sun. This is what uh, the secret of going to Mars. But the secret is that when you reach there, Mars also should reach at the same time. Otherwise, you will miss, miss the whole fellow. So this part, this is a, a, again a cartoon of what, what would have happened, leaving from Earth and reaching to Mars. So this required alignment occurs only once in 26 months. So we have to have the launch on a particular day, plus minus five days. So that's why if you look at the history of Mars mission, it happens once in 20, 26 months only. We have no experimentations feasible for doing this except go there itself. So what do we do? So we did a lot of computer simulations with exact assumptions to derive the trajectory. So look at this very carefully. This is the optimized trajectory. That six orbit racing maneuvers, we, we are here at point one. At point one, on November 30, the spacecraft velocity was increased tangentially to take it into an elliptical orbit at two. From here on, it travels in a, because by, by this point, it has reached velocity, which is sufficient to travel around the sun without any additional energy requirement. So it will go in this particular orbit and reach Mars here. But look at the requirement of precise calculation. Because at the time of leaving one, Mars is at this position. So we have to calculate very correctly in such a way that Mars also will reach this point at exactly at the same time, at the same instant. So the, our calculation and the, the performance of the propulsion system were so precise that only very two minor correction, orbit corrections were required during the entire travel of this distance of 667 million kilometers traveled in 293 days. And when we reached there, exactly at the point, Mars was there. So at three. So here, the spacecraft has to be slowed down to be captured by Mars. Otherwise, the spacecraft will continue to the deep space in this environment. While slowing down, if you slow it too much, it will crash land on Mars. So, entry to Mars means on reaching the sphere of influence of Mars, the velocity of Mangalyan is to be reduced from its sun orbital velocity of 22.1 km per second to exactly 1.10000 km per second to get captured into the predetermined Martian orbit. So the important question here is that, will the engine work after, it's a very complicated engine, I don't know whether you can see it, it would have been with hundreds of valves and other systems. Will it work after hibernation? Because the engine was not working for 293 days, will it work? You have a motorbike, many of you guys, in our time even to have a cycle was a, bicycle was a difficult situation, but today I think many of the students have motorbikes. So, you know, if you have kept your motorbike not kick starting for 10 months, it will never start again, no, unless you go to the workshop. But we can't go to a workshop in deep space. So, how do we ensure that it will work? So, answer is, of course, on ground we did compatibility tests, but on Earth, we did on T minus two days, a four seconds firing was carried out on the spacecraft. So this was the real breathtaking event for us. If it has not worked, the mission would have been aborted there itself. But thank God, not thank, uh, not only thank God, thank our technology. It worked exactly, and therefore it gave great confidence. Thereafter, we didn't have any doubt of the success of the mission. So the major events on September 24, when it entered the Martian atmosphere, was at 6:56 hours. 32 seconds, the spacecraft, how do you reduce the velocity of the spacecraft? There is no break possible. So you turn it by 180 degrees centigrade and then fire the engine. The, the spacecraft was turned by 180 degrees centigrade and then it was fired for exactly for 24 minutes and 14 seconds, which was calculated to give the exact reduction in velocity. So now you look at this 
what against 1.00 1.100 this is what we got so close no it was only 0.01% different from the per, uh, target uh, because of the near perfect uh, performance of the propulsion system so the spacecraft ended exactly at 8 o'clock in the morning uh, on 24th from canberra we got the first signal because that is where it was seen first time so this is the martian orbit what we achieved 423 by 800 kilometers elliptical orbit against the prediction we got 422 by 76,994 kilometers this is the closest ever achieved by any country on its maiden attempt therefore we call it the world over it is recognized that this is a perfect mission even though there is nothing called perfect in science and technology Okay, the first picture <clears throat> was handed over to the Prime Minister taken from the color camera of Mangalian was handed over to the Prime Minister very next day, our previous chairman, chairman who followed him. He was the uh, project director for the Mangalian project. And thus India became the first country in the world to reach Mars orbit in the first attempt, the only country in Asia to reach Mars orbit. And it joined the elite group of three spacefaring nations, namely USA, Europe, and Russia to attain this feat. Not only that, it is the most cost effective mission. So, this was a relative cost, you know, compared to European, American, Japanese, and joined the Russian Chinese mission. Not only that, it was realized in a record time of 15 months because all other countries have taken two and a half to three years. Why it was done by us? No miracle, because we had a PSLE vehicle, reliable PSLE vehicle available with us. Suppose we were to develop a, a launch vehicle for this, it would have taken minimum three years. It has performed beyond the mission objective of six months. As on last 24th, it has completed six years. Instead of six months, it has six years on orbit, still going strong. On July 21, uh, 2020, this is the actual picture taken. So we have received the signal also. So this is a glorious example of quick, innovative and low cost way of doing major tasks by India. But then look at the cartoon drawn by New York Times after the success of this mission. With a cow Indian knocking at the elite club of space club. There was a hue and cry. Many people said, what, are, what nonsense are these people telling? But to my mind, I always think in a positive way for the negative things. I think that this cartoon tells us very great things about us. What does it tell? In spite of being backward, we have achieved it. So, my dear students, you don't have to be elite by caste, creed, or your color to do great things. Okay. ISRO itself is a typical example. ISRO had a very humble beginning which started from a church building. We didn't have any laboratory. The first, uh, uh, thanks to the diocese, they vacated their church and gave it to Tumba uh, to, uh, to, to establish the Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launching Station. And this was a parsonage of the uh, Vicar that was used for making assembling propellants and explosives materials here and this was the first rocket launched so from this this was a, incidentally a american rocket from this humble beginning today we are rated as top in utilizing space technology for societal applications thanks to the vision of dr vikram sarabhai who is the founder father of indian space program who could visualize using space beyond indigenizing this type of sounding rocket. This is Dr. Sarava, a very handsome person. Who is this? You can, uh, you can tell at the end of this uh, uh, lecture. If anybody says it correctly, I think Nina will give you a, a, bar, a chocolate bar. Okay. So this picture was taken in 1971 when Dr. Sarabhai inaugurated our instrument analysis laboratory. We started the propellant and chemical activity from a small asbestos building 
roof building like this this building is even kept to preserved today it was i don't know whether they have demolished last year or not it was under doctor under another great visionary doctor wasant govarikar who is behind doctor sarabhai here okay thanks to his vision being materialized today we have a very mature indian national space system comprising our own satellite satellite launch vehicles launch and tracking facilities we are one among the five nations in the world having these capabilities not only we are providing nationwide service in communication weather monitoring disaster management education health management of natural resources etc i don't have time to dwell on this but i will give you just two examples you know from amrita medical institute at uh, kochi the doctors can examine patients in in jammu and kashmir or in assam or in port blair in andaman and nicobar we are trending to similar telemedicine hubs all over the country or thanks to the accurate forecast of where the potential fishing zone from the color surface surface color and surface temperature ocean color monitor and uh, sea surface temperature satellite you know 50000 crore worth of additional catch our fishermen could get ever since we have introduced this particular project but more than all these things the the life of human being which cannot be valued against rupee on 1970 november 12 the bolar cyclone claimed 5 lakh of people in india and bangladesh last year may 2 we had a equal intensity or higher intensity cyclone but the death was less than 68 thanks to the timely warning through the satellite so this is this is this has become a reality because the vision of dr sarabhai was realized through the vitality mean hard work passion and perseverance not deterred by failures and the values of isro values of isro means working together for a common national goal which is very difficult to find in many places including in our academy academia so people like thanks to the great visionaries who followed the vision was made a reality second chairman was professor sadis tawan who materialized dr sarabhai's dream and built isro into a world class organization this is professor tawan but in spite of our best efforts we had failures the maiden slv3 flight in 1971 79 was indeed a failure it landed in the the satellite landed in the bay of bengal probably for the whole of the nation this was the most disappointing failure but you know that how great dr uh, dr professor dhawan was when it was a failure he shouldered the responsibility of the failure and instituted and he faced the press people the prime minister and said the prime minister himself and he instituted mechanisms to find solution to the problem in isro any problem means the organization takes of the responsibility to uh, solve the problem i myself was a chairman of the failure analysis board in chemical area for more than 10 years so whereas in the next flight when it was success this is kalam explaining to prime minister indira gandhi he gave the people the credit of success so such a great leader he was that is why his famous quotation if you have a mission or task problem will definitely crop up no problem with all those guys who do not do any any scientific work but problem should not become your master you should become master of problems and defeat it and succeed so that is why despite of this failure but for the great support given by professor dhawan kalam would have definitely gone into gone behind the screen because he gave such a great support to him he rose from that stage to become the first citizen of the country and this is the quote confidence and hard work is the best medicine to kill the disease called failure it will make you a successful person not only that it will give you the courage to explore the unknown i will give my own experience of the example for this 
See, SLV3 first stage, there is a static test. What is called a static test means before flying, you do the test on ground. And the, this is a static test, you know, the flame here, huge static test. In the static test, the nozzle failed. So, Professor Dhawan, when he conducts a review of this, there will be 100 scientists there and 50 from various uh, national laboratories and academia were there. They were discussing where shall we send, how do we solve the problem. I was 27 at that time. I stood up. Then Professor Dhawan said, hey, look at that. There is a young boy standing up there. What does he want? Then I said, sir, there is no need of sending it to Japan or France for doing it. I will do it. Then he simply didn't agree to that. He consulted my boss, Dr. Gowariker, as well as Kalam. They said, okay, let us give him four weeks time. So I should say with pride that exactly in 25 days that in their characterization of the material was done and the why it has failed was found out and this is a picture which shows uh, you know that uh, that report being shown to professor Thawar. so we will have setbacks also for example the cryogenic technology uh, those who follow the space history knows that in 1993 there was a setback russians moved out of their contract under the pressure from us so 40 fine chemicals were to be developed for by us for indigenous cryogenic engine development. We are showing various chemicals developed to Dr. Kalam. At the time, he has moved out of ISRO. He just, this was just before he became the president. So what I wanted to tell you, my dear students, is that setbacks in life are really, if you take it in the positive stride, it is stepping stone to success. So let me conclude. Okay, vision, vitality and values became hallmark of ISRO in all areas of work. For example, this slide shows you Dr. Goerika presenting a proposal to set up a huge solid propellant plant while struggling to make even a tiny rocket. Look at his confidence. Committing to Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, Madam, I will do it when he was finding it difficult even to make a small rocket. So that is why it was not only confidence, hard work behind that, starting from nothing. Today, India is 100% self-reliant in the critical technology of propellants and related materials. This is where we were in 1969, tiny rocket. The same operation today being conducted out, this, this rocket, a part of it is being shown. This process is now shown here. This is a S-200 solid monster which is the third largest solid booster in the world. This developed a thrust which is equivalent to 11 numbers of the most powerful commercial aircraft engine of the biggest jumbo jets all firing together. That much thrust is developed by this single engine which was developed by us. So my dear boys and girls and also the teachers, of course, you are boys and girls to me also. Conclusion, I can say is that lesson from ISRO's successful mission is that you can, yes, you can provide it, but there are some conditions. One is that you should have a great dream or vision in your life. You should have proper plan. It's not sufficient to have a dream. It will become a dead, dead dream only. You should have proper plans and confidence to achieve it. You should have passion and perseverance to realize it with hard work. You should not be defeated by setbacks. Instead, you should learn from failures and improve upon your failures. And then you, finally, you should have uphold values in life. You can have short-term success with uh, shortcuts, but not permanent success for which you should have values in life. So the three Bs, vision, vitality, and values will take you to the victory stand as this wonderful girl from India did for many a time for us to the victory stand. So, yes, why I am telling? Yes, because we did it. We did it. Let me show you. This is how we started. Abdul Kalam and his friend uh, Arma Mudan way back in 60s. They didn't have even a laboratory or a table. So, squatting on the ground, they are assembling the payload, which is carried on a bicycle, launched from a tiny rocket like this. 
This was our laboratory in a corridor in between two buildings. From this tiny thing, today we are here. Huge rockets on top of which the Mangalian sits and it was launched on number uh, five like this. I suppose this hyperlink will work. It was launched like this. It is working. One second, I hope it will come through. Yeah. There's a beautiful launch. Ah, okay, it's, it's not coming through. Let, let, let me try once again. Okay, otherwise. Ah, yeah, it is here. It's a launch. I think every launch there is a clap, you know. I suppose wherever you are sitting, you should clap. This is a, a launch of Mangalya on PSL. I am visualizing all you guys clapping. Okay. So this is the last slide. This is the last slide. Okay. So I have, as usual, I have to acknowledge. But hundreds and hundreds work for this. So I can only acknowledge all my mentors and colleagues in Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. From here, all other centers started. And I should especially acknowledge this person who was the chairman, who was, of course, this is a picture. When President Madam uh, gave me the ISRO award at that time. So I should acknowledge my gurus, starting from ACSI school to Marthama College to wonderful Maharaja's College to Kerala University. I should acknowledge my teachers. Apo Marsh, who was the principal and, and also HOD. This is Paolo Sar, Raman Master, Kamat Sar. Of course, Matthew Sar, uh, two important personalities are missing from this picture. Matthew Marsh and then Bhargavi Andarjina. Not because they had a fight with us and therefore they did not uh, stand in the uh, picture. You know, at that time there was only one studio. The fellow will say, I will come at 4 o'clock, but it ended up very late in the evening. So they had to catch their bus and they, therefore they disappeared from the scene. That's all. We were eight of us here. These are the students. So last, first, thanks to Nina and the other, uh, you know, our alumni association, we had a meet. So we met together again underneath this nostalgic chair, uh, staircase. So this staircase told me, gave me, recaptured me with a great lesson that to go up in a ladder in life, you have to go an extra mile, which I should very, with all humility, I should say that I did it. Because doing all this research, my publications or my 28 PhD students, etc., were not the mandate of my work. It was beyond the scope of my routine work because I love to do the research and wherever I, 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 was, I found enjoyment in going an extra mile. So my dear students, my dear teachers, if somebody asks you to come with, uh, go for a mile, go two miles with them, as it was told in the Bible. So thank you very much for your patient hearing. So I think I should stop sharing and then see some of you guys so that we can have some interaction. Okay. Professor Ashogan, I suppose all of you enjoyed the lecture. That is really wonderful. <laughs> can, I, can, I see, can I see some of the students? Is it possible? I would like to see whether they enjoyed or not. It's okay. It's all right if they enjoy. That, uh, the, what is the name? The, uh, the Revadi, no? Revadi. Sir, wonderful class. Revadi is a student, no? Did you understand the, whatever I was telling everything? Yes, sir. It was simple and usual. Okay, okay, okay. Wonderful. 
so you represent the students fair and equal okay so if you have got any doubts you can ask me we will have another 5 minutes nina is it okay for suja is it okay if students we can have another 5 minutes yeah uh, now we have interact interactive session revathi yeah in the yeah uh now the set open for interaction anyone can put forward their doubt to raise in the chat box any question can be asked നിങ്ങൾക്ക് എന്ത് ഡൗട്ട് വേണമെങ്കിലും ചോദിക്കാം നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഏതാണ് എന്താണോ ചോദിക്കാനുള്ളത് ആ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻസ് നിങ്ങൾ ചാറ്റ് ബോക്സിൽ പോസ്റ്റ് ചെയ്യുക മടി വിചാരിക്കരുത് is there any question questions chodicholu sir chat box le korchu comments undu wonderful lecture thank you sir great class questions onnum vannatilla so i will imagine some questions and answer that <laughs> okay i imagine that some of you must be asking in your mind how can we have a settlement on mars right if anybody has that question you please raise your hand or or just say that yes in your chat box that as a student i have that now <laughs> okay okay let me tell you see there are two challenges one is that there is no oxygen so people were thinking that we will use what is called a cyanobacteria which was involved in the process of evolution of the earth which reacts with oxides and then generate oxygen so you have a large dome in which you have the bacteria and the carbon dioxide from air it will give out oxygen but still the problem of cold minus 64 degree how do we sustain so every time you have to have a jacket and then go but that cannot uh, lead to a permanent settlement that is why one great great person is there in the america his name is elon musk have you heard so elon musk is the chief executive of the spacex company so he is the guy who is planning to set up a settlement in mars by 2050 he has already built a prototype of a spacecraft which can carry 100 people to mars and in another 10 years he will be launching it you would have read in newspapers so what he is planning is a fantastic idea which nobody thought till now he said that i will take a nuclear bomb okay i find revathi is surplus what we will do with a nuclear bomb there i was myself surplus surplus he will take a nuclear bomb over that white thing white patch in the in the polar region you have seen it no revathi in my slide yeah. solid solid carbon dioxide and solid water on top of that he will blast a couple of nuclear bombs so what will happen there will be enormous amount of carbon dioxide and water will vaporize because of the high temperature that will spread over the entire surface of the mars so mars atmosphere will become denser and these two are greenhouse gases carbon dioxide and the water 
Mars will get heated up and then he feels that he has demonstrated it in a small scale. He feels that that way he can make the Martian environment more benign for human beings. Okay, because Mars will get heated up because of these uh, gases. There will be liquid water available because he has already vaporized it. And then carbon dioxide will get converted to, uh, sorry, hydrogen and oxygen will be generated from water using solar energy. That hydrogen will be used for fueling his rocket shuttling between Earth and Mars and oxygen will be used for breathing. Are you happy, Revati? Sure, sir. Okay, okay. Now, anybody sure. else having any doubt, you can ask. Answer the question. I think no one is having doubts. So, as I, I said, the, my lecture was very lucid. So, there yes, is uh, no scope of any doubt, no? Uh, sir, it was a very new thing for all of us. But it was well conveyed, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. The same lecture, if I give it to a 10th class student, which I have done, there would have been hundreds of questions, right? So, in Zarayana, Malay. Okay. 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 Let me wish you all the very best to Maharaj. I am always proud. Wherever I go, I say that I am a Maharaja's product. Okay. Uh, so you have made us realize from a life example that an earnest attempt can help us to explore high. And it was a great session. Very informative and new thing for all of us in the midst of chemical reactions and equations. And you have conveyed everything in a simple and lucid way. Now, we do believe in vision, vitality, and value, entry, victory for life. And sure, we are extremely thankful to you for your valuable time and talk. Okay, okay. How many attended? I just wanted to know how many students attended. I think uh, um, it's around 70 or 65. Okay. okay. Now, okay. may I really invite Dr. Suja Enar? Associate Professor, Department of Chemistry, Maharaja's College, to propose a word of thanks for today's session. Suja Mute. Suja Mute. Suja Future. Suja Mute. We can't hear you. Can you hear? Yes. Hello? Ah, yes, miss. Now we can hear. Can you hear? Yes, yes. Good evening, all. To succeed in your mission, you must... To succeed in your mission, you must have single-minded devotion to your goal. With this quote of APJ Abdul Kalam, I take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks to all those who have contributed to this seminar. At the outset, I thank our chief guest and resource person, Dr. K. N. Nainan, who meticulously explained one of India's scientific achievement in a simple way. Now, as students and teachers, I understood that how much difficult it is to bring theory into practice. Mitre mission, also called the Mangalyan, has made us Indians really proud. The talk by Dr. Nainan has really helped us understand how the various disciplines, chemistry, physics, max, engineering, etc., has been combined in this scientific achievement. Sir, we, the Department of Chemistry, Maharaja's College, is extremely grateful to you for delivering such a 
interesting lecture we look forward to you to your association with us in future also sir i thank our principal maharaja's college for giving us this opportunity to host this uh, webinar i extend my sincere thanks to our hod sri kp ashokan sir for his enthusiastic support i thank the iqsc of the college and its coordinator dr tosh tivergis sir for his constant support and help in making us enter with the live telecast of this webinar a special thanks to all the teachers and students from various other colleges and the students and teachers of our department uh, for the curiosity shown in the seminar i thank revadi and akash for their excellent comparing and the prayer song presented in this seminar with this we come to the end of today's seminar and again thank you nayan sir for your excellent presentation thank you very much Once again, thank you, everyone. Hope to meet you soon. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, I have put one link feedback form link in the chat box. So please uh, fill up the form to get your certificate by email. Okay, don't forget to fill up the feedback form. Yes, Professor Shogun. Oh, hello. Hi.